How you doing guys, welcome to another video. This is volume 3B, still on lipids, and we need to talk about steroids today, and that's something that I definitely haven't taken any of. Let's get into the video. Okay, volume 3B, lipids, we discuss iodine number, we talk about rancidity of fats, and then we also have a very quick discussion on some of the health impacts. So we're still on option B3 on lipids. Make sure you check out the understandings, the application and skills. They're the ones that are covered in this video. So the first one, iodine numbers, which is a degree of unsaturation of a fat. Halogens, they can undergo addition reactions with unsaturated hydrocarbons and therefore can undergo those reactions with unsaturated fatty acids. Bromine and iodine are widely used because they become decolorized or the color disappears. The main thing about this reaction is one mole of either iodine or bromine reacts with one mole of double bonds. So the iodine number of a fat or an oil is the mass of iodine that reacts with 100 grams of the lipid. The more unsaturated the oil, the higher its iodine number. So for example, linoleic acid has the formula C18H32O2 to determine the iodine number of linoleic acid acid. The first thing I would encourage you to do is rewrite it with the functional group shown, the C00H shown. And then the formula for a saturated acid, we can work that out and work out how many hydrogens we're missing. So from the formula of linoleic acid, we work out that we have 31 hydrogens. A saturated fat would have 35 hydrogens. That's four less hydrogens. For every two hydrogens, we have one double bond. So that means that linoleic acid must have two double bonds in its formula. Now we need to set up a ratio. We have one mole of our fatty acid, and that's going to react with two moles of iodine, because this has two moles of double bonds. So the way that we can work out this, the answer to this question, the iodine number, is we start off with the number of moles of the fatty acid. We know from the definition that it's per 100 grams of fatty acid. So we do 100 divided by the mole mass to give us the number of moles of the fatty acid. Then we can use the ratio to work out the number of moles of iodine. We said that the ratio is 2 to 1. So we need double the amount of I2 to react with all of those double bonds. Once we've determined the number of moles, now we can work out the mass, and the mass tells us the iodine number of the fatty acid. So the number of moles times by the molar mass will give us the iodine number of linoleic acid. The iodine number is 181, which means 181 grams of iodine will react with 100 grams of the lipid. In this second example, we're asked to determine the number of double bonds from the iodine number. So the iodine number of palmitic acid is zero, and the linoleic acid is 274. Determine the number of double bonds in linoleic acid. Now if we look at palmitic acid first, well, it's got a iodine number of zero. That means that it does not react with iodine. So what does that say about that fat? Well, it says that it must be a saturated fat. It has no double bonds because it can't react with the iodine. To determine the number of double bonds in linoleic oil or acid, the first thing we need to do is work out the number of moles of I2 that it reacted with. So we can do the mass, which is the iodine number, 274, divided by the molar mass, which is 254 giving us the number of moles of iodine that reacted with all of the fatty acid. We can also work out the number of moles of fatty acid because this is per 100 grams. How many grams of iodine reacted with 100 grams of the fatty acid? So we were told the molar mass, the molecular weight of the fatty acid, so we can also work out the number of moles. Now we do a little bit of a trick. To work out the number of double bonds, it's the number of moles of iodine divided by the number of moles of the fatty acid. We're just setting up a ratio. What is the ratio between these two things? When you plug in those numbers, you see that the ratio is three. Three moles of I2 needed for every one mole 
of fatty acid, which means that this molecule has three double bonds. Okay, rancidity of fats. Fats are used in the cooking industry and they can be stored for long periods of time. There's two types of rancidity that can occur. We can have hydrolytic rancidity and oxidative rancidity. Hydrolytic rancidity occurs when the fat breaks down by hydrolysis reactions. That's where we've got water in the fat and at high temperatures the enzyme lipase can actually be favoured in the presence of different bacteria, and it starts to break that fat down. So it gets broken into glycerol and some fatty acid molecules. Some of the fat, fatty acid molecules in particular can be actually quite bad smelling, which makes it smell rancid. Oxidative rancidity occurs when the unsaturated fats react with oxygen from the air. And the site of reactivity is the carbon to carbon double bonds, especially in unsaturated triglycerides. We can control this by the addition of antioxidants, but after a long period of time, those double bonds will start to react with oxygen and start to break down. So cholesterol. Cholesterol is a lipid, and there are two types of lipids that we have that control cholesterol. We have high-density lipoprotein and low-density lipoprotein. Low-density lipoprotein is the major carrier of cholesterol from the liver to the rest of the body. When cholesterol levels are ex excessive, the low-density lipoprotein deposits the cholesterol on the arteries, and it starts to block up your arteries. High-density lipoprotein mops up that cholesterol and takes it back to the liver. So it actually reduces the cholesterol in your bloodstream and reduces the chance of it being deposited in arteries. So HDL is sometimes referred to as good cholesterol and LDL is sometimes referred to as bad cholesterol. The more LDL you have, the higher your risk of heart disease. We also need to talk about the use and abuse of steroids. And there's sort of two uses for it, and there's also abuse. So anabolic steroids are a class of steroid hormones related to testosterone. Their structure mimics the, the structure of testosterone, and it does the same thing in the body. It works in the same way. So the buildup of tissues, especially in muscle, is an, anabolic, an anabolism, which is where we have smaller things making a larger protein, and testosterone helps to increase that muscle building. So what can happen is if you go over the top, you look like old mate up here on the left. But on the other hand, anabolic steroids are also good for people who have problems with bone growth, appetite, can help with diseases such as AIDS and cancer, where if you're starting to waste away and get weak, you can take some of these steroids to help you increase your physical strength. Side effects can include bad temper, incidence of acne, trembling of the hands, baldness, etc. Another example is eczema creams. Um, eczema creams help to reduce that inflammation. Volume 3B, top tips, don't take steroids. Thanks for watching guys, don't forget, drop a like on the video, subscribe if you're new, and I'll see you next time.